Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with designer Kate Spade from the afterlife. Now, this video is special. It's going out as a gift to a very good friend of mine who I know is a mega fan of Ms. Kate Spade. So I reached out to this friend of mine and I asked her to provide me with some questions because I wasn't really sure what to really talk with Kate about. So she provided me with some. So I'm going to read those as we have dialogue and conversation with Kate Spade in the afterlife. Now, if you like this platform, pay attention. I'm going to post a video where I'm going to request from you to send me through email questions that you have for a famous afterlife guest, whether it be somebody that we've already talked to or somebody that we haven't. So I'm going to be looking for those emails. You can send that email to abovelifechannel at gmail.com. And I may pick you, your questions and your person. Make sure that you know that I will say your first name and where you are from. So if you're in the US, I'll say what state you're from. And if you're from other parts of the world, I'll just say what country you're from, all right? Okay, so let's talk with Kate Spade in the afterlife. Okay, so I know that she's kind of brunette, so let's see if I, her hair looks short to me. I'm not sure if it's real short, kind of sleek, modern. It looks that way, unless it's pulled back and I'm only seeing her from the side. I feel like she has a daughter. She's wearing a very simple black dress. It's like a sheath dress, but it's a little bit looser. Um, it's not tight. It's, it's trimmed through the chest and then it kind of loosens up a little bit, a little bit flowy. Um, and it's right about the knee. And it looks like she has like a belt on, like a patent leather belt. And She's carrying a bag, and I know that she has purses, you guys. Like, that's how I know Kate Spade. That's all I know of Kate Spade. She has a bag, and it's like a, a handbag that, you know, just carried around your arm kind of a thing. And it has a little bit of an angle to it. So it, I'm not sure. I didn't do very well in geometry, so I'm not sure the sacred shape is that, like, <laughs> a trapezoid. I don't know. It's kind of almost triangular a little bit, but wide on the bottom and wide on the top. There you go. All right. So, all right. And then, so I see that. And then I see, it's interesting because I see just solid colors with her, like a uh, beautiful blush pink and a uh, gorgeous gray and a black, like really known for black. And then I see kind of branching out for hand, these are for handbags. And then I see like in, different then I see branching out and getting into different fabrics and colors like especially florals it looks like and it looks like scarves like I see scarves like I'm not sure if they're tied around the handbag or if they're actual scarves but I can see her actually in a scarf and it's like a um, like a poppy almost like a kind of an ivory background with some blacks and some vivid pinks in it and maybe a tiny little bit of a purple kind of a color but lots of different like bright pinks in it and on an ivory background and I see that tied around. around um, she kind of has it off to the side a little bit. Kind of right here. Um, it's a scarf. It's pretty. Um, almost a little bit Audrey Hepburn-like, her vibe. Um, I'm feeling a connection or a kinship with also with Coco Chanel. And I'm also feeling so I, I think I think I remember that she was from New York. She feels like New York City. So either she's originally from there or she moved there. Um, this is what I'm knowing about her. And I also know, I do know that she committed suicide. I know that. I, I know that that's a fact. So, all right. So let's talk to Kate and ask her some specific questions. I'm obviously seeing her. She hasn't spoken much. I'm not clairaudiently hearing her at this point. I'm feeling her work and that that's a great source of pride for her and that's a, her company and building her company and I do feel like there was some financial stress within the company and there were some questions or concerns about either breaking it up or 
part of the company being sold or that there's some kind of an investor or somebody that owns more of the company or wants it to, to do some different things. And I feel like there's some financial stress around the company, the mission, that kind of a thing. And so I'm not sure if that's happening now or if that happened right before her death, that maybe precipitated some of her death. She's making me feel like her relationship, like with her husband wasn't good. And so her personal relationship, like I don't know if they were actually going through divorce, but she's making me feel like it was like an up and down roller coaster. And she's also making me feel like um, there was drinking and I don't know whose part, I don't know if it's hers or his, but there was a lot of unhappiness is what she's saying in the home. So uh, I'm just gonna put that out there. Okay, so she's sharing with me. So that's heart-based, clairsentience, feeling, sensing. Most of you will be able to pick up on empathic information because you're empathic. That's just the way it is. That's how you channel through your heart space. All right, so here's some of the questions. All right, so you sold your business prior to your transition. Oh, okay, I didn't read the questions before I did this channeling opening. I just popped it open on my computer. So, okay, good, all right. So there was stuff going on with the business. Okay, so my friend says, you sold your business prior, I love it when that happens. I, I just surprised myself. I'm like, wow, I'm so, I'm so right. <laughs> I'm like, I should be surprised by that, I uh, know. All right, so, sorry, a little brag there, a little bragging. Uh, you sold your business prior to your transition. How do you feel about the current direction Kate Spade as a company is going? She's saying, it's not mine. It's not mine any longer. It's not mine. It's, it's my name, but it's not mine. It's not really for me to judge. And it's not for me to, to really say. Is your company left? I'm going to ask this question. Is your company left to your family or your daughter? It will be part of her legacy and her inheritance, yes, at some point. if design is in the family, if that's something she chooses to pursue. I feel like she's in college now. I feel like she's in college or right about the college age, you guys. So I feel like she's a teenager into, either that or she's a really mature per age. She's like a teenager into the early years of college. That's what it feels like to me. Um, like I feel like she's studying. I can feel her studying her daughter. Um, So uh, let me ask this question a little bit differently, or let me ask a little bit extra here. Is, if you would still be here at present as a human managing your company, Kate Spade, how would it be today? What would be your vision? What do you see um, being a focus? She says accessories. Accessories have been something that is, ever changing and always evolving. And there's always opportunity there to expand, whether it be through scarves, through purses, through belts, that there's always an opportunity. And the price points are accessible to people. She's also showing me perfume, you guys. Maybe that's the relation to Coco Chanel. Something about fragrance, like that she is, she realizes, like she's saying, fragrance is a bit cliche, but it is something that when you wear it, it makes you feel a certain way. It, it, it exudes uh, an essence and it presents your personality and it can also change the way you feel based upon the fragrance that you wear. It says a lot about you. It's like a signature, that scent. And so fragrance is something that I see as part of the company. I also see dresses. I see dresses. Do you have clothing? And then she's showing me, yes. <laughs> she says, yes. She says, yes. And a lot of like pattern, simple patterns. This dress is like a sheath dress, but then it kind of comes out a little bit. It's looser fabric, you guys. And it's a lot of different, um, the prints aren't crazy bold necessarily, but there's a variety of them. And I really like it. I really like this. And then she's showing me like a simple, like a cardigan over the top of it for the office, like um, like a simple cardigan that's a color, like bring color into your life. You can have a simple pattern, a palette in the back with a, with a print 
the color is so important than the way the colors interact with each other. It says a lot about you and your personality. And clothing, like with perfume, it can change the way you feel about yourself and it can reflect out to the outside world who you are. So it's very, very important. She's showing me beautiful blues, some iris colors, some violet, some hot fuchsia pinks that are really gorgeous, really gorgeous, almost to the red. And then like really, the backgrounds are very ivory and it's not like country, it's not even like a boho, it's like a, a classic style really like that and then like with that kind of a, a floral print there would be a like a hot pink fuchsia cardigan that you would wear to the office and and that kind of a vibe i guess and then you can take it off and it's like it's sleeveless like there's not sleeves on it it's sleeveless so you take it off and then you know you can go out with the uh, the ladies for you know like a brunch kind of a thing you know that kind of thing and then she's showing me alcohol again like mimosas. So I don't know if she struggled with alcohol. Okay, so let's move on, ask the next question. Everyone asks about greatest accomplishments. Can you talk about the small triumphs that you experienced either in your personal life or your business? She says, acquisition. She says, uh, we survived a merger or uh, like a takeover or something. There, were, um, there was an attempt by a larger uh, fashion house to incorporate us. And we were able to maintain our own degree of integrity, but at the same time partner with another company that was a better fit for us. So I consider that one of my, one of my feats of strength to survive the especially in the early days the bigger companies they can really swallow you up and it's it is like a cat and dog world it is like a fight to try to survive especially in the early days and i'm appreciative of being able to maintain a consistency in our products and their quality in in what Kate Spade as a company represents and there's definitely a classic a classic legendary legacy type of a vibration um, I'm saying vibration that's not her word there's very much a classic consistent vision for the company and there's an appreciation for things that are the finer things. Things that are simple, like a, a simple floral pattern, can be elevated to a classic look without being overdone. Very much simple, elegant, classic is the... It, fashion should not be complicated for people. And I hope that that is something that has become part of what I am known for as a designer. The, the real woman and appreciating the woman, respecting the woman. Okay. And then she says, she kind of jokes, she says, one of my greatest accomplishments was um, surviving childbirth. That's <laughs> what she says. So she's made, taken a nod at her daughter. And uh, I think she only has one child. It feels like she's talking about a daughter. So there's got to be a very strong bond. If she has another child, it might be a stepchild or that kind of thing. But this, the daughter is really like, whew, really connected. And she kind of laughs like, she feels like a normal person, like um, not super outgoing, not a little more introverted, but um, I would say she's serious. But I also would say if she, once she gets to know you, she can let her hair down, so to speak, and be, be real funny, you know, be kind of funny and, um, but not uh, funny, not fake, but very, um, like her humor is a little dry, which I like and appreciate and kind of subtle. I like that. So that's how she feels. All right. Good question. All right. How can each of each one of us identify? Oh, this is perfect question. You guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, Ms. Kate Spade, how can each one of us identify the signs of depression or suicide to help others in your situation? What actions can we take to make a difference? She says, 
This is an important topic. I, I would expect it to be asked. It's very painful. I recognize that this topic is very painful. It's a painful reality. And the legacy of suicide is something that no one wants to leave for their, their loved ones, their families, their friends. It's not explainable. It's, it's really hard to, to justify the choice. And I am certainly not a speaker for all who have made the choice to complete suicide. For me, I can share that mental health, my health was a factor. I was very distraught, very upset. But I would have these episodes or instances where I was very um, manic, very, very... It, it's interesting, you guys, because so she's showing me this manic kind of episode where she's very, very stressed and very anxious. And then there's this great deal of sadness that comes with it. So the manic isn't like productive and happy and let's get it done. It's like, ah, it's like almost like a major panic attack mixed in with a cocktail of depression. And I feel like there's alcohol involved with her. Like, I don't know if she's self-medicated or what the deal with that is. It feels like alcohol is involved. And that would make sense because if someone deals with anxiety, they would tend to want to medicate that or dull the manic energy of anxiety with like an alcohol, which is a depressant. However, over time that erodes the systems in the body and it creates just a real constant state of a low level energy vibration that is like a constant depression. And I've seen that in session with other clients and I, I see it in, in um, energy fields and things. So I know that that's how, that's how it works. So just, just be aware of that. If, if, uh, if you have drinks to calm you down, just be aware of that because it can create a constant state of lower vibration, which is like a low depression all the time. And you don't realize that, that you might not realize that's what's happening, but that's what's happening. So just be, be aware of that. And she's showing me, oh, I see a doorknob and I see a scarf and I... Did she hang herself? I think she hung herself. It looks like that. But her room is so beautiful, I have to say. It almost looks like, like a brownstone or something, like um, beautiful old buildings like in, in New York or outside of New York, you know, like in certain um, boroughs of New York. It, there's these beautiful brick when I've been, I've been to New York once, a oh, gorgeous place. And this lifetime anyway, one time. And like these brownstones kind of, and, and I see this big like kind of bay window area where it's just big window jutting out and there's brick in the front and there's all this light pouring in and then there's like this bed and there's this, these sheets and there's this like almost what looks like a beautiful, I want to just lay in bed, kind of soft, cozy, kind of just be here scene, almost like from a movie and then, but that's it. There's nothing. Like there's just shallowness. Like there's no depth to the scene. Um, she feels a tremendous amount of guilt about her death. And she says, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it. And she's making me feel like her medicine wasn't accurate. Like I feel like she was seeing a a psychiatrist or counselor or somebody and she was trying to get a handle on the depression energy and the stress energy that she had and it feels like it's related to her relationship so husband that kind of thing and her marriage and it, that feels like the big impetus the big focus and I'm not blaming the husband let's just be clear that's not she's not either she's not blaming anyone 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 for her death she feels guilt about her her death and she's making me feel though like medication wasn't right either. Like she couldn't get the medicine right. So it was like, unless she stopped taking it because it literally feels like there's a crash, like almost like a hormonal thing, like a boom hit the wall and like there's no other choice. Like I'm, I'm drowning and I just need to get out quick is kind of how it feels to me. Like it wasn't that planful. Like I feel like 
Like it was a consideration and it was a thought that kind of came in and out of her mind to, that she could terminate her own life. But, and, but she says that morning I knew, I knew that morning. I didn't know the night before necessarily. I didn't plan it like that, but that morning I knew that it was, it was over. I, uh, it looks like she left and then came back to her house. Um, I don't know, it's kind of a weird, it doesn't feel very good. There's so much sadness. So as far as the question goes, Kate, I love the name Kate, you guys. I love the name Kate. Love it. My daughter's name was almost Kate. Almost. Almost. But then I had to compromise. Had I had to compromise, so I did. Um, how can each of us identify the signs of depression or suicide to help others in this situation? What could anybody else have done? What could have been done differently? She says, I pushed everyone away. I pushed everyone away. That's a sure sign. When people say they just want to be alone, they don't want to be alone. They might want to be alone, but they, they shouldn't be alone. They should not be alone. Don't question your own judgment. Even if you're worried that your friend's going to be mad at you or upset with you, push it. Keep pushing it. Let them get mad at you. And she's saying that she had friends that would check on her or were worried and concerned about her, but that she kept pushing people away and keeping them at arm's length. And she said that's a strategy, is to be, a, to be very cruel to people that you love and you care about so that they will get away from you so you don't feel their love. Because if you feel their love, it's harder to leave. It's harder to leave this life to make that choice. So you push everybody away and you make up this story that you're alone and you're isolated, even though these people are reaching out to you. So my recommendation would be to continue, consistently reach out. When you have that feeling, and you know you do because your souls are connected, it is very true. What you say, Bridget, it's very accurate. The souls are very much connected and the spirit knows, your soul knows, it knows. And if you know something's not right or something's wrong, you, you need to act on that. And it's better to be wrong and be considered irrational than to have your friend, your friend die. So push it, push it. And I know it feels like you're a glutton for punishment, but you, you, if you know in your heart of hearts that you can make a difference, do not, do not let them push you away. And, you are, and if you can say that to them, you can say to them the truth, you're pushing me away. I know you're pushing me away. I know you say you wanna be alone because you're trying to isolate yourself. Why do you feel like you deserve that? Let's talk about this. And if you wanna be alone, that's fine. But I'm gonna be in this other room here and I'm gonna be making tea. And if you wanna come in and have, some, and have a cup of tea with me, you can, but you just go sleep in the bedroom and I'm just gonna stay here to make sure you're okay. And that's it, that kind of thing. She says, just don't give up. I don't feel like there's anything that anyone else could have done for me. She's talking about her, I think she's talking about her dad, like trying to help her, that her dad was trying to help her. And that he was most devastated by her, her, by the loss of her. That she feels like she hurt him perhaps the most. He tried the hardest, she said, to help me. But she's talking about a friend too, a good friend. Like I feel like she has a good friend in like, um, that, that's well known, that was devastated, like crushed by her death, but wasn't surprised, knew that she was struggling and having challenges. And I see her, like somebody trying to interview her and she has like sunglasses on and she doesn't want to talk about it. So her bags are really her thing um, because I keep seeing them. She keeps showing me bags and they're beautiful, like patent leather bags and simple, classic, just gorgeous, gorgeous, you guys. I have to look at her stuff because I'm not really like trendy, like designer stuff, like Gucci. and I'm not, probably because I don't have a lot of cash to be just spending on that kind of stuff. Like I have other things to be focusing my finances on. So... Maybe I should look at her stuff because I haven't, so I don't really know, you know? All right, so next question. Oh, so she asked a question that's very powerful, Kate, that I've heard many sessions because I have talked with families who have lost loved ones to suicide, whether it be a, a brother, a cousin, 
uh, a child. Why? And then she says, your admirers are heartbroken. Why? And she kind of sits back and sits up. She's very nice postured. She sits back and sits up and she says, I can't really answer that question. There isn't a, an explanation that will make the pain go away. There isn't an answer. Since your death, your transition into the afterlife, have you met others who've taken their own life? Is there like a support group for spirits that, you know, former humans that are trying to work through? I mean, how, how does that work? Can you speak about that a little bit? She says, you find peace. You do find peace. But it's true what you've said before. It is a bit like counseling and support group and it's not as easy to let go of some of the former emotions that the body held. But I don't want you to consider that there are many spirits who are, are not at peace because there is peace. There is an incredible blanket. It's, it's a, it, Peace feels like a security and where you have the, the incredible gift of time to heal, to believe once again, to understand the value of your soul and of the life that you led without the pain of, or guilt or the shame of your death. Death does not, it does not define you. It should not define you, but it's hard to escape the reality that it does, especially in these, when these choices are made it tends to overshadow the amount of history you created for your life. And while that's understandable, this feeling of worthiness and value is something that I felt part of here. And I can't speak for others because our choices, although we all share the fact that we chose our own death. It's not about the way that we died. It's about the continuation of the plan for our life. If we've cut that plan short, then we must reconsider our other options how we choose to fulfill our human experience from the afterlife perspective is different for everyone. I, I'm not sure what others have for their plan. What is your plan? Do you have a plan? I'm working on what you would consider almost like a, a charity or nonprofit sort of a status. If I was a person, you would feel that, but as a expression of light, I am working on fostering a stronger sense of peace and value and allowing other spirits, other souls that are connected to me 
to experience and know that feeling, those feelings of peace in their value, having peace in their value, and that's what certainty is. That's what certainty is. That, that is what certainty is. To know peace in their value, and that's, that's part of my work now. Wow, you guys, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And thanks to my friend who sent me questions for our conversation with Kate Spade in the afterlife. You have been watching one of my weekly channeling videos here at Above Life Channel. The purpose is always to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope because this is your life and it's time for you to live it, to just live it. Go ahead and send me an email at abovelifechannel at gmail.com if you have somebody from the afterlife that you would like me to pose some questions to. Please limit your questions to five or fewer, okay? That will be helpful for videos so they don't get too long. But I will also share your first name and where you're from. So thank you so much for watching.